Hello, welcome back to Cardinal Science for this first video on ionic bonding. Okay, now the points we're going to study today aren't strictly ionic bonding. However, they are the very important background information that you need to do it. If you can't do this, you'll really struggle with ionic bonding. So, we're looking at 1.37, 3.8 and 3.9. We need to understand how ions are formed by electron loss or gain. We've got to know a bunch of charges and we've got to be able to write formulae based on those charges. So what is an ion? An ion is essentially a special type of atom. Now atoms by definition have equal numbers of protons and electrons and are therefore neutrally charged. All of the positives are cancelled out by all of the negatives. Ions are simply atoms that don't have an equal number of protons and electrons. They are imbalanced and this gives you an overall charge. So if they have more electrons than they do protons, then they have more negatives than positives and therefore overall they'll be negative. If they have more protons than electrons, they'll have more positives than negatives, and overall they'll be positive. So for example, if I show you a sodium atom here, and that will be 2H1, and of course you'll remember how to do this from using the periodic table from a previous video. Okay, so there's a sodium atom. Now what it does is it loses an electron and forms a sodium 1 plus ion. Now because there's only one electron in that shell, we lose that shell entirely and we're left with only the second shell there. We've got a charge outside the bracket, so that is now a sodium 1 plus ion. Okay, the new electron configuration is 2, 8, and we started off with 2, 8, 1. So we've lost the negative, which means we now have more positives than we do negatives, so we have a positive charge. The alternative situation is a fluorine atom. Fluorine atoms are 2, 7. Now what they do is they gain an electron to get a full outer shell and therefore have eight in that second shell. So we give them a square bracket again to indicate an overall charge. And we draw our electrons in. And I'm going to draw a dot here to indicate the extra electron that it has. And now it's two, eight, and it has a minus charge. So atoms can either lose electrons or gain electrons to form ions. Now we'll look first at the formation of a positive ion, and that happens when atoms lose electrons. So if we look at sodium, on the periodic table, you'll see it has 23, 11. It's mass number 23, it's atomic number 11. And we can figure out how many protons there are, how many electrons there are, and how many neutrons there are. So of course, the atomic number 11 tells us there are 11 protons. It also tells us, since it's an atom, there are 11 electrons. And then we do 23 take away 11, which is 12, to tell us how many neutrons we have. Now, since we have the same number of protons and electrons, the overall charge is zero. It's neutral. It's an atom. However, the sodium 1 plus ion, 23, 11 as well. Okay, number of protons is 11. Number of neutrons is still 12, but it's lost an electron. So now its number of electrons is 10. We now have 11 positives, 10 negatives, which gives us an overall charge of one positive. Okay, now the equation for that, which you might be asked to draw, is Na arrow Na plus plus E minus. We never minus electrons in these equations, so that's something to note. Okay, let's look at the other side. Fluorine atoms. Fluorine on the periodic table is fluorine 19, 9. It has nine protons, nine electrons, and 10 neutrons when it's an atom. Its overall charge, since it has nine protons and nine electrons, is of course zero. Now, the fluorine minus ion, known as fluoride ion, is also 199 and has nine protons, 10 neutrons, but has gained an electron. So now it has 10 electrons. Now we have 10 negatives and nine positives, which means we have one extra negative for all of the positives that we have which gives us an overall charge of minus one. And the equation in this case is going to be F plus E minus goes to F minus. Right, so that's fairly simple. Some atoms gain electrons, some atoms lose electrons, and they form ions. But what charge will they form when they form an ion? Now that depends on the number of electrons in the outer shell. Because atoms form ions so that they can gain full outer shells. And I'll try and do that in the most simple way. So for example, looking at the magnesium atom here. 
So the magnesium atom is 282. So it's got two electrons in the outer shell, which could hold eight. So it's currently not full. Now there are two ways for it to achieve a full outer shell here. It can either gain six electrons and become 288, or it can lose two electrons, lose that shell entirely, and become 28. Now, losing two electrons is easier than gaining six, so it's going to lose those two. So what will happen is it will lose those two electrons and it will form a 28, and that will be a two plus ion. Now, we have the same situation for chlorine here. Chlorine is 287. So it can either lose seven electrons in the outer shell and collapse back to the shell before, where it has eight, and that would be full, or it can just gain one electron. So of course, it's a lot easier to just gain one electron. So chlorine, as any other group seven element would, is going to gain one electron and become a one minus ion. So it has two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and now it has eight in the third shell. And again, I'm going to draw that extra electron as a circle because it actually comes from another atom. And I'll explain that when we get into ionic bonding. So now this is two, eight, eight. Now you could just draw every atom and figure out what would be the easiest thing to do with regard to forming an ion. However, there are some simple rules you can follow so you can figure out what charge ion something will form based on its position in the periodic table. And by that, we just look at the group it's in. So if you have a metal, and obviously metals are in group one, two, and three, okay, they lose electrons. And if it's a group one, it will form a one plus. If it's in group two, it will form a two plus. And if it's a group three, it will form a three plus, because of course that corresponds with the number of electrons in the outer shell. Conversely, the non-metals at the right-hand side of the periodic table will either become three minus ions if they're in group five, two minus in group six, and one minus in group seven, because of course, group five elements have five in the outer shell, need to gain three, become three minus. Group six have six in the outer shell, need to gain two, will become two minus. And group seven have seven in the outer shell, will need to gain one electron and become a one minus ion. So have a practice using this information on these questions at the bottom. Pause the video and I'll go through the answers in a moment. Right, let's check the answers then. So calcium is in group two, so that will form a two plus ion because it's a metal and it will lose electrons to, to get filled out of shell. Cesium is in group one, so it'll form a one plus. Aluminium is in group three, will form a three plus. Oxygen is in group six, so it'll form a two minus. Nitrogen is in group five, three minus. And bromine is in group seven, so that of course be one minus. So in addition to using the periodic table, there are also a few ions that we just need to memorize the charges of. And there isn't really any way to do that aside from just memorizing them as they stand. So you've got some transition metals, silver, copper, iron, lead, and zinc, of which only silver is a one plus and the rest of them are two plus. And then of course, you've got another selection where you've got the hydrogen ion, which is one plus, you've got the ammonium, which is one plus, hydroxide, one minus, nitrate, one minus, carbonate, two minus, and sulfate two minus. Now don't be confused here. The four, the three, the three and the four are referring to the numbers of hydrogens as in ammonium or oxygens in the other three. Nitrate is not a three minus charge. It's NO3 one minus. Carbonate is NO3 two minus. Sulfate is SO4 two minus. Now, what do we really need to use this knowledge for? Well, knowing the charges in these ions allows you to write the formulae of a compound from its ions. This is something you'll have to be able to do. Now, to do this, what you need to achieve is a balancing of the charges, okay? Because of course, compounds, by definition, just like atoms, are not charged, okay? They're neutral. So the positives and the negatives need to cancel each other out. So if we were asked to write the chemical formula for sodium chloride, and I know that sodium ion is one plus and the chloride ion is one minus, then that's fine because of course we've got one plus and one minus, which means we can have NaCl. If I had something, for example, like magnesium two plus with Cl minus, I'd be in trouble because of course they don't go one to one. I'd have two plus with one minus, which would mean I would need two chlorines for every magnesium. So it would be MgCl2. Likewise, 
if I had aluminium, which is a three plus ion with chloride, I would need three chloride ions for every aluminium to cancel out the charge, in which case I'd have AlCl3. People tend to struggle with balancing these charges. And so there's a method that you can use called the cross method that will help you do this. Now imagine we were being asked to write the chemical formula for aluminium chloride. Now aluminium is a three plus ion, so we write that up there, and chlorine forms a one plus ion known as chloride. Now what we want to do is write down Al and Cl next to each other. And now we're just gonna try and figure out what are the small numbers to make up this compound. So what we do is we take the number from the charge on the aluminium, the three, and we move that down after the chlorine, put the three there. And of course, in reality, we've kind of got a one here, but we don't bother writing it because one minus is the same as just minus. And we take that number, the one, and put that after the aluminium. But again, of course, we don't really need it, but that is our formula for aluminium chloride, AlCl3. So let's try another one. Aluminium, three plus, oxygen, two minus. Okay. Do the same thing, write down A, L, and O, and we move our numbers according to the cross rule. So we take the three from the aluminium, put it after the oxygen, take the two from the oxygen, put it after the aluminium, and we get A, L, two, O, three, which is the formula for aluminium oxide. Now, have a try at calcium nitrate. We'll do it over here. Calcium is a two plus ion. The nitrate ion is a one minus ion. Note, if we need to have more than one nitrate ion, we're going to need to put it in brackets. So pause the video, have a go, and see if you can do it. Okay, so let's try again. So we'll write calcium below, and we'll put NO3 next to it. Now, I think there's gonna be more than one nitrate ion here, so I'm gonna put the nitrate in brackets. So we put the two from the calcium after the nitrate, and we have the one here, which of course we don't really use, but it can go there. So that translates to CaNO3, 2. Because of course we needed two nitrate ions with one minus charge to balance the two plus charge on the calcium. Okay, so now you have the basic knowledge that you require before we can move on to ionic bonding in the next video. But this content can in itself be examined. So let's just have a look at what that might be. You might be asked to write an equation showing the formation of an ion from its atom. So for example, of magnesium ions from magnesium atoms right here. So what you would do is you'd write down Mg, an arrow, Mg two plus plus two electrons, because of course the magnesium atom is losing two electrons, forming a two plus ion. Or you might be asked to describe it, in which case you can actually just write down the equation. Otherwise you just say the magnesium atom loses two electrons to form a two plus ion. You could be asked to draw a dot and cross diagram for an ion, okay? In which case, what you'd want to do is probably draw the atom. So for aluminium, you have two H3. I'll just do the outer shell electrons. One, two, three. And then of course the ion is gonna be in brackets. Don't forget the brackets. Charge goes outside, two and eight. And there's your aluminium three plus ion. Or you could write the chemical equation for sodium sulfate. So if you remember, sodium is a one plus ion, sulfate is a two minus. And so you could use the cross rule and you get Na2SO4. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Look out for subsequent videos on ionic bonding. Take care.